Guys, not even a year ago, the X-Man, David Driver, turned the X-Rigging Rings loose from ExtremeArborist.com and TreeStuff.com. And ever since then, people have been thinking about how to use these rings for tree rigging applications. Back when I did a video on taking one of his plain slings, converting it to a whoopee, adding an arborist block and a device called the wedgie and building a heavy-duty rigging system that was remote installable and retrievable. Today we have a new state-of-the-art based on the extra-large X-rigging ring. Here it is compared to the large X-ring. This is the large X-ring. This is the extra-large X-ring. To avoid a little confusion, I'll call this the beast. Uh, I think it's a big, beautiful beast because it lets me rebuild this system to be cheaper, stronger, much lighter, and easier to work with. That's what I'd like to share with you today. So here's the main element of the system. It's a three-quarter inch 10x tech whoopee carrying a beast in the locked Brummel. And to this we add three components to support different rigging configurations. The first is a rigging prusik, a 10 millimeter rigging prusik, carrying another beast in a secure girth hitch. The second is an 8 millimeter locking prusik, carrying a large X-ring in a secure girth hitch. And the third is a little 1410 X-ring in a sliding double, double fisherman's loop and this is going to act as a retrieval ring. What I'll do now is show you four configurations and we'll cut back and forth from the bench to the trees so you can see it in action. Clearly the simplest configuration is to just pull the beast through the adjustable eye of the whoopee. Here's the very simplest configuration, a single ring on a plain whoopee. Since there's only one ring, you'll want to limit this to fairly mild redirect angles. On smaller stems, you'll have the cordage to girth hitch and float the redirect out away from the stem. Also on smaller stems, you can round turn the whoopee to choke the ring close in. Or sometimes it's just faster to pull the whoopee out, girth hitch, and consume the cordage with a half hitch running down the length of the stem. When the, when the redirect angles are larger or you want to do top rigging, you'll want to soften the bend, the bend radius for your bull line. And you do that by attaching the rigging prusik, lay in a four or five turn clem heist above the fixed eye of the whoopee. And then adjust the position of the clam heist so that the two rings are at equal height. And you're ready to go. Now in this configuration the whoopee is suitable for top rigging 
because the two X rings have the equivalent bend radius of three of the large rings, and you can use the two rings in tight choke situations or floating redirects, same as you did before. Here we have the whoopee configured with the dual beasts. The way you manage the whoopee is identical, just with more rings. Here we're choking tight around a stem. And here we're lengthening the whoopee to girth hitch the stem and consume the cordage in a half hitch. Before we move on, I'd like to make a comment about this particular configuration. This is really my go-to configuration. It's a single-ended configuration, and that's generally associated with lighter rigging. But I found that this system does so much that I'm using this configuration more than anything else. Uh, the 10x is the MBS on the 10x uh, is pushing 25,000 pounds. That means the working load is over two tons in a single-ended configuration. On top of that, the rings can handle uh, a three-quarter inch stable braid with uh, eyes. Uh, the effective pulley diameter is two and a half, uh, three and a half inches. And on top of that, the whole thing weighs less than five pounds. So uh, I can really do 99% of the kind of rigging I do with this configuration, and that's why I'm seeing it more and more often. When you want to dial up the strength or use a remote install retrieve, then you want to go to a double-ended or basket configuration. In order to do that, we're going to move the beast from the fixed eye to the adjustable eye. How on earth are we going to do that? Well, first, pull off the beast from the rigging whoopee. And pull it out of its girth hitch. Now take your locking prusik and lay in a five coil clem heist above the adjustable eye. Hang it vertically and place your beast into the eye and jam the prussic down hard on the beast. Now if you do this right, you wind up with a good looking connection that leaves the load on the beast and yet provides a locking connection for both of the rings. In this configuration, the locking prusik is doing three things for you. It's locking the beast into the adjustable eye of the whoopee. It's fattening up the bend radius for your bowline in heavier rigging situations. And it's providing the classic ring and ring geometry to be able to install and retrieve this system using a little retrieval ring. Here's the whoopee in its double-ended configuration, installing as a normal ring and ring saver. Except, retie your throw bag as shown, 
and use a throw bag that won't wedge into the beast. That way the beasts will wind up on the outside where they can do the most good for your bull rope. You can certainly use your throw line to do a controlled retrieve, but if you're over soft ground and you know where your groundy is, clear. the rings can take care of themselves nicely. Finally, there's one more configuration which is uh, very important. And that is a choking double-ended configuration. In order to get that with the old system, you had to do a round turn around the stem, and that meant carrying a lot of cordage and taking the time to set it up. With this system, the rings are their own natural standoff to keep your bull line off of the trunk of the tree. So you can use the adjustability of the whoopee to set the rings four or five inches apart and then use the bull rope to provide the choking force. Here you see the whoopee and its double-ended configuration. And here's the bungee cord tied rather inelegantly in a loop with a band rubber forming a small keeper so it will slip over the beast in the fixed eye and hang on to the whoopee. The bungee cord is very useful when you throw the whoopee around the tree and you need a third hand to hold the whoopee while you set your rigging line. There the whoopee is being held in place by the bungee cord and the bungee cord never sees any rigging forces, just the weight of the rings. Now you rig up your rigging line, your bull rope, and you'll notice, and oh boy, this is important, you'll notice that the bull rope does not contact the, the trunk of the tree. In fact, even the uh, tenex in the beasts is held off the tree by the lips of the beast. Very nice arrangement. The same idea applies to um, closing the whoopee using a twist tie. Uh, here's a little miniature timber hitch holding the whoopee together while you set your rigging line. The bungee cord is easier to work with, but the twist tie has the advantage of letting go when you want it to. Here is a retrieval ring being set on the rigging line and it'll catch the small ring and come out of the tree uh, when, the, when the twist tie opens up. So that's pretty much it. This system is not hard to build, but there are a few details that you have to get right. Um, the diameter of the cordage in the groove of the X-rings is important, and the length of the locking prusik is critically important. You want, you want that X-ring to hang in exactly the right position when the prusik is jammed down on the beast. Those details will be in another video um, coming out in a couple of weeks. If you're interested in building it, you can click on subscribe and you'll be notified automatically. Thanks for watching.